Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifies Tutorials. In this video we're going to look at the uh, Elton Mayo's Hawthorne effect which is uh, a very popular motivational theory uh, to improve uh, employee productivity. Uh, we've been looking at a lot of uh, motivational theories uh, like the Taylor's uh, theory, Maslow's etc. So I wanted to continue the trend and look at uh, every possible uh, motivational theory. I uh, want to just remind you guys uh, that uh, I really appreciate uh, if you actually use the comment section in my videos to, to recommend videos uh, or basically topics that you want covered in this channel. I highly appreciate any inputs and appreciate any feedback and also uh, any topics that you want covered. I will try my level best to, uh, to to cover those. Obviously, those would be topics relating to business or management or you know theories of motivation, etc. So you know the theme uh, that I follow in this channel now. So let's have a look at uh, the Mayo's Hawthorne effect motivational theory. How did it all begin? In the 1930s, uh, Professor, uh, or rather, I'd say. Uh, uh, psycho psychologist uh, Elton Mayo started experimenting at the Hawthorne Western Electric plant in Illinois to study factors affecting employee productivity. Now, as opposed to Taylor, Mayo was uh, a believer in the fact that uh, money alone is not the biggest driving force to employee productivity. So he therefore wanted to study other factors. So various factors starting from lighting, a very basic factor, to employees working in groups and various dynamics being uh, put in place were supervised and studied in the factory and all through the uh, all through the study the participants were consulted and then changes were also being introduced on the go so broadly what was the Hawthorne effect what were the conclusions well Mayo concluded that, as I just explained, money isn't the only influencing factor. There are things other than money that, that, that motivate and drive employees in any organization. Employees need to be supervised, he says, in a supportive manner to induce productivity and motivation. Their social needs are also to be met. So what does this imply in specific terms? What are the specific observations from the Hawthorne effect. Better communication. Better communication between team members and the team management with feedback being the essentiality. So communication, a continual link between employees and employers basically is essential to ensure com employee, com uh, employee motivation. Management involvement again leading back to the broad observation that we made which was uh, employees being supervised in a supportive manner that is what this ties in with management involvement in a balanced way to ensure productive supervision and autonomy equally so you have to be careful in terms of employee supervision obviously you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be in a situation where you're making where you're making an employee feel that he's being you know spoon fed he that that is the baby feed uh, sitting uh, session going on so you got to make sure that employees are supervised in a way that autonomy is also ensured but they be that they're being supervised and they're being mentored basically and obviously working together in groups is uh, a major influencing factor because it also uh, it also ensures that there is a social element to the way of operating a business. So these are the specific observations and the implications of the experiments that Elton Mayo uh, conducted. And that, that is what the specific aspects of the Hawthorne effect enlist. So what were some of the criticisms? Well, the major criticism came from uh, uh, Clark Kerr, who was a leading uh, professor at the time, uh, Clark Kerr's criticism uh, was that the the technique is nothing but an extreme form of manipulation 
because it makes people believe that the company is actually interested in employees and uh, you know but on, on, on the other side what all it's interested in is increasing their productivity by motivating them so it it actually it actually spins a web around them and as Clark Kerr used to argue it is actually a way of putting a wolf in sheep's skin by inducing a con continual employee interest in uh, uh, employer interest sorry in employees it makes them feel that the company is actually interested in the welfare of the employee but it's actually more interested in bottom line results so it is a bit of a manipulation and that is the major criticism for this theory a very simple theory but it is still one that is in use today and is very popular uh, whichever business textbook you refer to there's always a mention about Elton Mayo's theory of motivation okay I hope that was useful for you this is a good quick little introduction and as I as I already mentioned in the start of the video I'm looking forward to your comments and your inputs on what you want to see in future videos uh, thank you very much for your attendance on this uh, video and as always keep supporting the content of this channel keep subscribing liking and sharing this content thank you very much goodbye